Hey, this is Naltzer, and this is Untitled. This week, we'll be discussing the British Cruiser launching and the reception that it has received from the community. I also want to touch on the containers, because, uh, honestly, maybe I was wrong. And then finally, oh, by the way, you don't want to shoot point-blank at a tank in Battlefield 1. Yeah, you might have an accident and kill yourself, and then get run over by that tank. But uh, finally, I want to talk about Battlefield 1 and Civilization 6. Both of those games have come out. I am trying to learn how to play both of them in what spare time I do have. I would love to share some extra content with the channel. We'll just talk about that briefly. But first, the British cruiser line. Oh my. It is a sight to behold. It was awful absolutely awful the way it was released i i just can't express the frustration that i feel and i'm sure many of you feel in the british cruiser line it starts at tier one it goes all the way to tier 10 and oh boy it's a uh, it's tough sledding it's really awkward it's really frustrating you're gonna fight players that are good and you can't do a thing you cannot do a single thing to a good player. Either your AP is bouncing off harmlessly, or you can't angle to put your torpedoes in the water. You'll die, because you just you just take so much damage. You get sitting down all the time. I have game after game after game of me just sailing, being spotted, and boom, taken out by a broadside shot from a battleship. I mean, maybe two shells, three shells, but they, they just take out the Citadel and your history. There's no armor. It, it's got to be like the hardest ship line in the game. It has to be. I'm trying to think. Aircraft carriers, I would say, yeah, aircraft carriers. But even aircraft carriers, you can find success in failure. It's not really that easy. You can deal with a good player. Now, good players can counter you basically as hard as they can counter the British cruiser line. And I do enjoy cruisers more than aircraft carriers, of course. It feels more action-packed. You're involved in the combat far more. But it's just, it's just so awkward. It's just so awkward. You basically have to stay in smoke the entire time to do anything. It, it's just... I, I I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know what they were thinking. So, I've been working through some of the British cruisers. I've been skipping a lot of it because it's just not viable. And I would say it starts to feel good once you can get access to 10 kilometer range torpedoes. Or not good, uh, better. Not completely mediocre to poor performance. And those torpedoes are really, really fun to use. The narrow spread and the single launch is fantastic. It really is. If you can get good concealment, you will absolutely find success. But not everyone's going to have a 15-point commander that they could stick in the British Cruiser Line. You know what that tells me? It's a weak line. It sounds exactly like the Atlanta. The Atlanta is just not viable unless you have a skilled commander and you are skilled yourself. It's just too weak. It's too vulnerable to fire. Its detection is awful. You know the drill with the Atlanta. That's, that's pretty much the British cruiser line. So, I've been playing it. I got a couple games up, a couple more for it, and I'm re all. Oh, this guy got lucky. Okay. Okay. Whatever. I don't care. I get lucky all the time. It's more about how entertaining the game is, how close the person is to death. You have to get lucky to survive some of those things. But yeah, I, I am not impressed at all with the British Cruiser Line. I think having one ammo type is just not viable in this game. It feels like I have one hand behind my back trying to fight players. If they're good, or at least competent, they know what they need to do. 
angle and just force you to shoot and do no damage to an angle target. You can't choose your ammo. They can. So, yeah. I have shown it off and people were, eh, you know, this is cool. This is, uh, oh, wait, no, it's not cool. It's way too hard to use. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's unfortunate. It's the first British cruiser. Well, it's the first British line in the game. And there are a lot of people who happen to be enthusiastic when it comes to British naval combat, naval ships. It's just unfortunate that that's the way they came in the game. I know they'll fix it. Because it would be dumb not to. <laughs> but I don't know when they're going to fix it. I don't know how they're going to fix it. They have their own vision of the game. And it's different from mine. Clearly, with the aircraft carriers and how they work. So we'll see. I'll be here. I enjoy the game. I actually can do this and throw my face into a brick wall whereas most of you probably can't you play a game for 30 minutes to an hour if that every day that's two or three games and then you move on with your life you actually do your job take care of your family you don't have a lot of time to waste and i think the british cruiser line right now is a waste of time but that's not honestly the most interesting aspect of the patch. These containers are really interesting. I can't believe how lucky some of these people are. And I'm sure 99% of the people watching understand exactly what I'm about to talk about. The subreddit for World Warships has been posting a ton of people opening containers and getting premium ships, doubloons, a bajillion credits, and I'm just sitting over here getting three to five flags, 50 credits, and that's about it. And I will probably make a video just so I can express my disappointment. I have recorded every single container I have opened so far. But it's just, it's like, uh, it, right now it doesn't come off as betting to me or gambling. It comes off as absolutely crushing any hope that I would ever have for success in anything. <laughs> it's a compounding and already frustrating existence I have with RNG because of World of Warcraft. Legion launched and for what? Two months? I have not gotten my hands on a legendary and I, I just want to express for anyone who doesn't understand it. Gear is everything in World of Warcraft. You need gear in order to improve your character. So what you're trying to do is get better gear, obviously. Well, guess what? The best gear in the game is the Legendary. And the Legendary drops less than a percentage, 1%. It is extremely rare to have a Legendary drop. And it's sort of required to succeed at the top end, or at least improve your chances for success. And oh... I have not seen it drop once. The RNG is not on my side, both in this game and World of Warcraft. Honestly, in every game ever created. I'm just one of those people where I only can be successful if I make my own luck. I am not a lucky person. I never get drops. I never get the loot crates to get me something that I want. It's just not in the cards for me. And uh, the containers have shown me just how not in the cards it is. But it's great to see people get these containers and have massive rewards. Ships that are no longer available to purchase. Doubloons. Credits that will cover the purchase of 10 ships plus. I'm very happy for you. I just hate you. Because you're so successful. Compared to me. I hope that you continue to have success in the game but I would prefer it if everyone else found some of that success can you can you like tell us what's going on how are you getting so lucky I'm sure everyone wants to know we're not interested in just sitting back and watching but uh, yeah I mean the containers so far 
Honestly, they've created excitement where there was none. I appreciate that. I am enjoying the process of getting it. It does take a really long time, in my opinion, to get the containers. Is anyone else feeling this way? It takes me at least five or six more games than I would normally play per day to fulfill the missions, the daily missions. Usually, I could get everything done in three to four missions, maybe. I mean, it wasn't very hard. I'm not bragging about anything. And my reward so far has been less than I got from those daily missions. It's, uh, boy, it is, uh, it is just one of those things where you're just, <laughs> please game, show mercy. Just a little bit of mercy. <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah, I'm playing in the stream and it's taking me three, four hours to get through enough base XP, I believe it's base or total XP, to unlock all three. Now, to be fair, probably the reward is better overall, but you're investing more time in the game in order to, re to really retrieve that reward. It's whatever, right? I stream, people watch, we talk about the game, we try and share our strategy, we have fun. I don't really have time to play the game outside of streaming at this point. I do try, I, and this is another thing that I really need to talk about. I see people, I can't watch your stream. Please don't stop sharing really great games from your stream. Okay. And then you have people, why are you posting stuff from your stream? I've already seen that. Ah! What I want to do is I want to do an entitled... I want to do at least one user replay. I sort of have dropped anchors away, and that is only because it is so much work to do streaming. Two videos and one. I would love to go back to it at some point, but even now I see the people who want to watch, watch. The people who don't want to watch, don't watch. Part of creating entertainment that people watch and listen to is keeping up with the times and I've, I've seen people talk about some games really obscure games even more obscure than this game it, it's just not gonna happen maybe I'll do one video maybe a weekly video talking about a game I don't know I know everyone here who watches my content probably watches it because it has taught you how to play the game there is a little bit of humor I would love to do more humor my failure is the humor at least that's what I try to. Like that Battlefield clip, that tank absolutely destroyed me and he had no mercy doing it. That's the sort of humor I like when it screws up so bad that everyone can just laugh at my failure. That's the kind of humor I like. I don't like humor that's forced. I don't like doing jump scares where I, f oh, I'm afraid, oh, it's so scary. I don't like that. That's not something for me. So, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch, World of Warcraft, World of Warships, Battlefield 1, and Civilization 6. I am absolutely terrible at Civilization 6. And it's because they added a new mechanic called amenities. Anyone play Civilization 6 or Civilization 5 and then going to 6? It's really weird. You sort of have to plan your city and give enough housing for the growth of the city, otherwise it, it's stunted. And this is on top of providing enough food and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm finding myself, I'm not growing fast enough in order to keep up with the AI and the multiplayer opponents. I would love people to tell me if they have a, you know, a solution or a suggestion, but my civilization has not gone off the ground and I would love it to. I just can't get it yet. As far as Battlefield 1 is concerned, I think it's great. The DirectX 12 is poorly optimized. You want to run DirectX 11. On my system, it's very noticeable the drop in performance when you go to DirectX 12 versus DirectX 11. And uh, it shouldn't be that way. DirectX 12 is supposed to use quad cores, six core, all that stuff cores, and have a more efficient 
CPU to GPU communication so you can maximize your total performance. Well, DirectX 12 for Battlefield 1 is complete garbage and it has worse performance than DirectX 11, at least right now. I really like the way Battlefield 1 looks. I'm just, I'm getting back into Battlefield. I used to play it all the time. It used to be my game from like the age of 13 to 16. I just love Battlefield. People were playing Counter-Strike. People were playing Half-Life. People were playing Halo. And I was playing Battlefield 1942. And it was great. And I would love to see a World War II Battlefield again. You know, maybe I'm nostalgic. I just miss historical games. I don't really enjoy generic space shooter. I think Halo worked because Halo feels really grounded in a reality that I could see exist in 500 years. Humanity is still using kinetic weapons. They still are very militaristic. It's all believable. And it feels good. It has good lore. And that's sort of what history is. It's great lore. So you could create scenarios that are interesting. And I just want to see a World War II game that is full-on, triple-A, pushing the limits. I just want to see what that would be like. I miss it. I miss it extremely, extremely. And I grew up during the heyday of World War II games, right? They were just everywhere. All the time. No let-up. I don't want to go back to that, but I do want to see another World War II. So, the gearing game was fun wasn't really a high damage game that's sort of why it's background I plan to try to release a battlefield gameplay video and talk about battlefield all of the different modes and what I like about it what I dislike about it same with civilization 6 I am improving my color correction for my Elgato capture card I didn't like the color tone that I was seeing so that you should notice that the next time I post a video well maybe a couple videos from now Either way, I hope you enjoyed this untitled talking about everything and the British cruisers. Oh, please fix them. Fix them, Wargaming. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.